We've been putting this puzzle together for years, but I think I finally have the final piece to solving Five Nights at Freddy's. So with the release of FNAF 6, there's been a lot of new lore coming about, and it seems that the season has finally come to an end. In this video, I'm gonna go over my theory as to what all the new lore that has arisen means. Let's start off with simply the question of, what are these abominations? These are, in fact, the Funtime animatronics, Baby, Funtime Freddy, and Ennard, and Springtrap. Now you may be wondering why I say Ennard is lefty. My reasoning for this is that both Funtime Freddy and Baby were both left-handed, and since they were half of Ennard, it would make sense to say that Ennard is also a lefty. Considering that Ennard is an endoskeleton, it's completely plausible for Ennard to be in lefty. However, there are other possibilities as to what Lefty is. A lot of people think Lefty looks like a toy version of Nightmare from FNAF 4. But aside from appearance, there's little evidence to back this up. A very popular theory is that the marionette is in Lefty, because as we can see in this death screen, there appears to be something with a striped pattern inside of Lefty. Keeping this in mind, when you look back at Lefty in the catalog, it doesn't seem impossible that the striped pattern is simply out of view. However, when you compare the proportions of the neck of the marionette and the length it would have to be to keep the head out of sight there, there is no way that the marionette's head would fit inside of Lefty's. Frankly, it does not matter too much as to who's in Lefty for the rest of the theory to make sense. One more thing I'd like to bring up about the design, though, is that Baby's weird lobster claw thing? That's not an entirely new design choice for her. Anyways, now that we've established our basis, it's time to start decoding the good ending speech. First of all, who's Elizabeth? Elizabeth is a character we've known about for a while now, since FNAF 4 actually. Elizabeth Afton is William's daughter and the soul in Circus Baby. Circus Baby herself, however, has her own artificial intelligence that was put in place when she was created by Afton. The artificial intelligence that is not initially evil, but is driven through its programming the need to kill. It is clear that her soul and baby and herself are two separate entities in the same body, as Henry says, And give up your spirit. They don't belong to you. Furthermore, we know that baby has some sort of an artificial consciousness, as in sister locations she's able to describe the sights and smells of the day she captured Elizabeth. I was covered in glitter. I smelled like birthday cake. These descriptions come before she abducts the child, which can only mean that she has intelligence of her own. The next major question this game left us with is, who's the Orange Man? If you're unaware, the Orange Man appears in a secret room within one of the arcade minigames. You can drive to the Orange Man's house and is shown to be the night that the Crying Child was killed. I would like to make it clear that Elizabeth and the Crying Child are two different people. Elizabeth becomes Baby and the Crying Child becomes the Puppet. Anyway, back to the Orange Man. The first thing that must be understood is that the Orange Man is definitely the same person talking during the g good ending. We know this because they both refer to their daughter as being the crying child. My daughter, if you can hear me, I knew you would return as well. It's in your nature to protect the innocent. I'm sorry that on that day, the day you were shut out and left to die, no one was there to lift you up into their arms, the way you lifted others into yours. And it is shown in the hidden in minigame that the orange man is also the father of the crying child. Now who exactly is this person? He seems to be more than just a random parent of a victim. He knows about the animatronics, about William, and furthermore, he's able to interrupt Baby and hack into your screen. The only possible answer is that this is none other than Henry, William's partner, the original technical-slash-creative side of Fazbear Entertainment. This is the only true option that makes any sense. He knows all about Freddy's and its secrets, and he's able to work with the animatronics and similar technologies as he hacks into the monitor and Baby. Still don't believe me? Well, this one line from the ending cutscene confirms it. And to you monsters trapped in the corridors, be still, and give up your spirits. They don't belong to you. For most of you, I believe there is peace, and perhaps more, waiting for you after the smoke clears. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, friend. Friend as though they were old partners, perhaps? Another thing I thought would be interesting to mention is that purple and orange are on opposite sides of the color wheel, so it could be symbolic of how Henry and William are very clearly opposites to each other. So how does this all come together? William Afton kills Henry's daughter at Fred Bear's family diner after she runs away from home to return to the restaurant. She then becomes the puppet. 
Afton, at a later establishment, dresses up in the spring bonnie suit to cause the infamous missing children incident. The puppet is able to preserve the children's angered souls by putting them into the main animatronics we know, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. The puppet follows these withered animatronics from FNAF 2 to FNAF 1, as shown in the FNAF 2 cutscenes. Sometime later, William returns to the restaurant to destroy the haunted animatronics for good, only to be cornered into the Springtrap suit, his deathbed. The rest of the spirits of the children are set free, however that's not where the story ends. Afton is still alive in Springtrap, and his thirst for blood is not yet quenched. He creates what we know as a sister location in order to test new technology designed to capture children. It's made clear throughout their blueprints that this is their purpose, and one of them succeeds. Circus Baby, who we discussed earlier has her own AI, captures and kills Elizabeth Afton. By the end of Sister Location, everything that was left of these animatronics is on the loose, waiting to be found, trying to get into your establishment and kill the children as they were designed to do, so that as Baby puts it herself. Now we can do what we were created to do, and be complete. All the souls of these animatronics want is to find a way to be at rest. Henry knows, however, that killing the, these children is the AI telling them what to do, and not what will put the souls at rest. He arranges to get all the sister location animatronics in one place so that he can destroy them all, setting the trapped souls free and finally finishing William after for good. All of this seems clear with the end of FNAF 6, but who do we play as? One idea that might make a lot of sense is that we are once again playing through the eyes of Michael Afton. It would make sense. Michael would buy a franchise to find his father and get his revenge. I'm going to come find you. I'm going to come find you. However, I have a different theory. The player's identity is you. After all, you're the one making all the decisions for the restaurant, and you don't go into the job with a goal other than to make money. And this is backed up by Henry addressing us as a brave volunteer and saying that this job was not made for us. The job must have been made so that Michael would find it and burn with the rest. However, we are not who Henry had in mind for the job. He says that he believes we'd want to stay. And as the player, of course we want to know what happens next. With all loose ends tied up, Henry retires the company, and with that, the series comes to a close. So, what does that mean for Michael? Is he still looking for his father? Well, I believe with the death of his father, he too is now at rest. The gravestone ending shows the names of multiple night guards that we've seen throughout the games. For example, Jeremy and Fritz from FNAF 2. It could be explained that Gabriel and Susie were our names in FNAF 3 and Sister Location, and the name hidden behind the grass is Mike Schmidt from FNAF 1. These are the many fake names Michael Afton used to get those many jobs following his father's tracks throughout four of the five games, and the one on the hill underneath the tree is different, because now he's finally really at rest. But remember, that's just a theory. A theory about video games. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts on this theory in the comments, I'd love to hear what people think of it. Be sure to bring up any counter evidence you find too, I'd love a debate. And while you're at it, be sure to like this video. After all, you watched to the end. And if you haven't already, you should subscribe. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!